G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today we're working on a, what the hell is this thing? Bear with, bear with, bear with. G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today we're working on a Nissan X-Trail T31 2010 model with a 2.5 litre engine in it. Now, that really means nothing. What we're looking at today is the alternator. The customer has brought it in with a noise. I want to identify what the noise is and also it's got a charging issue. Are the two related? Let's have a look at it together. Bit more to this particular story. The customer bought it in for a noise and I was able to quickly identify that. I booked it in for a later date, but in the meantime, he broke down and he had the NRMA replace the battery on it for him. They said that the alternator was faulty. Are they right? Let's check it out. What noise, I hear you say? Have a listen. Just a little bit whiny. How do I isolate it? I'll show you. Just by going old school, we should be able to listen if it's the alternator. Carefully. I'm going to put my microphone on there and see if you guys can hear it. Do you hear that? Pretty noisy, hey? So yeah, it's definitely the alternator. It's definitely like an alternator bearing, something along those lines. But what was the charging issue? Can we rescue this? Are all the powers and grounds okay? We should check that first, hey? Okie dokie, first things first, we need to establish if the alternator is charging this here battery. Now this battery is a brand new battery, the other one got killed, and uh, so the customer is obviously concerned about this one being dead as a result of the alternator not charging it. Anyway, we've got 12.46 uh, volts, that's uh, a fraction low, but that's not bad considering the fact that the alternator is not doing any charging or is it let's let's start up the engine and see what it's up to yeah well that's no good hey it's dead as a pork chop it's not doing anything it should be up to you know 13 to 14 uh, volts but yeah it's doing absolutely nothing and it's not surprising with that noise no doubt internals have failed as well so according to auto data here we have uh, just a few wires coming onto our alternator. We've got uh, a ground, which of course is the body. We've got our main output, uh, one that goes up to the battery, the big sucker. And that's got a, a fuse in there. Uh, it's either a 450 amp or a 120 amp. Either, either way, that's a big sucker. Uh, the next guy down will be a sense wire. So you can see that that comes through here, through there, through there. It'll be a 10 amp fuse. So we need to check and make sure that that's okay. The other one will be the light on the dash. You can see that over here, can't you? That's our instrument uh, cluster. And that will have a fuse attached to it as well. Firstly, what we need to do is check our sense wire and make sure that we've got power going there. So that looks like a, uh, what's that, a red wire going into it, I believe, into the alternator itself. So we'll check that. Then we'll check our light wire coming back here to the dash. Is there a light on the dash at all? Let's have a look at that first. When we turn on our ignition, there should be a battery light that comes on. And in this case, yes, there is. That's that little guy there. That indicates that uh, we've got brush contact and it's going through the regulator down to ground. So I don't have to worry about that particular wire. But what about that sense wire? Do we have 12 volts coming from the battery to that? So we've got our main battery terminal here and our connectors underneath. I might have to loosen this guy because I can't really get the connector off underneath. It's a bit stuck there. Uh, we've got a good ground contact over here, so I'm not worried about that. That's a good ground there, no probs. If I was doing a voltage drop, I'd have it running, but in this case, I'm not concerned. So I don't know if I can get this up or not without pulling this main battery lead off. It's a bit doid like a doiger, mate. Oh no, I got him off. So there's our two wires, a blue and a pink, and this pink wire, I believe, is the sense wire. So we should have uh, 12 volts here at all times, so we'll check that. And I've got uh, my multimeter on the negative side of the battery. Just hook up this here. We've got good 12 volts there. This one here, I should be able to ground it with the ignition turned on, and that should bring my battery light on. Let's do that. 
at the moment with the ignition turned on and that wire disconnected we have no battery light do we uh, that should be around about there somewhere let's uh, connect that wire to ground and see what it does I'm just using a test light at the moment as a protection side of things you probably can't see but that light is on so the dash light will be dull as well because this is basically in series therefore the current the amount of current going through both of these globes will be halved sort of kind of anyway let's have a look at what it's like inside and there he is there's our little battery light just because I've shorted that uh, wire that globe wire to ground normally it goes through the regulator down to ground but in this case I've used my test light and that's just to protect the circuit from anything going wrong so yep proof of concept we have a crook alternator so this is the alternator I'll be fitting it's a JLEC brand it's a 65-6595G in case you were curious not a sponsor of course this is the bad boy here and it comes with this adapter uh, so it uh, translates obviously th from a three pin into a two pin which is what our style is so we'll need to connect into that um, last time I did one of these I ended up pulling off the undercover of the engine and um, you know quite a bit of work involved there but this time I'm going to cheat well I'm hoping I'm going to cheat and use some really long spanners not a sponsor but I just bought this set these are actually quite long uh, what are they 430 the longest one and 238 on the shortest one they're quite long we'll be using the um, 14 mil one here this is what PK tool whatever that may be uh, not a sponsor as mentioned but uh, yeah I'm going to give it a burl hey see if I can get down there without crawling around underneath the vehicle to, to pull the bottom cover off all right I'm not going to be able to show you while I'm doing it but my thinking is I've got an Oki strap on the belt itself so when I undo my tensioner down there I don't drop the belt down there and I can keep keep some tension on the belt and then I can pop my alternator out I've already disconnected my positive side of the battery now I don't disconnect the battery simply because I've got to do radio codes and stuff like that so I simply remove that off wrap a rag around it tape it out so there's no chance of it shorting got this connector out I've got an earth strap over here that needs to be undone and then the alternator itself and hopefully um, I'll show you shortly if I get it right if not uh, the vehicle's got to go up in the air and get that bottom cover off but yeah fingers crossed that'll work it's pretty hard to show you guys but as I mentioned it's directly below the water pump that's the tensioner there and it's a little bit hard to access from the top but I've got my really long spanner on top um, recently purchased mind you and if I can pull back on it uh, like that you can see the uh, the alternator belt is now loose now I've got tension on the alternator belt simply so that it doesn't drop down and I'll lose it off the the uh, pulleys etc so I can't show you that obviously I'm going to pull off the alternator next and um, hopefully everything works out well but uh, once you've got the the belt off then you can just slowly release your your spanner but leave it on there of course because you've got to put it back on you don't have to fiddle around with that to get it back on so once that's off alternator off job's done that's the theory just to show you my setup I've got my long spanner on there as you can see it's going all the way down there and I've pulled it back and I've been able to release the tension off the uh, alternator belt that in turn I've got hooked up to an Oki strap that comes down here it's not going to hurt the paint or anything and I've just got it wrapped around the grill here so we've got some tension on this reason I'm doing that is so that none of this comes off those bottom belts because that would be a bit of a nightmare to put it all back on so I'm keeping some tension on this and hopefully when I replace my alternator it's nice and free I can get to it once I've replaced that then I can just gently put this back on and Bob's your uncle that's the theory not going to lie took a bit to get past all these hoses etc a bit of wigglage jigglage bit of stretching and stuff like that but finally got it through you know, like giving birth to a watermelon but yeah finally got it out no problems um, so my belt is still being held in place by my uh, Oki strap so that's good I'll fit the new one next and hopefully get my belt back on without too much hassle well it's blowing a blizzard outside there guys but yeah finally got it on uh, actually went really really well it's a great idea to have the really long spanner to get to that uh, bolt and of course using that Oki strap just to keep tension on here I didn't lose any of the belt off any of the pulleys so I was pretty happy with that result and the alternator's in place just got to button it up with all my wires and brackets and stuff like that then we'll do some further testing got it all back in place no problems uh, the main issue was trying to get this battery positive in place it sort of kinks over one way it's got locators there and it can only go this way or it can only go that way so 
I did try and remove it, but that didn't seem to work. So I've put it in this position. I can still get my dipstick in and out, no problems, but not ideal. I would have liked to see it go a bit straighter, uh, put less stress on the cable, but I don't think that's an issue. So it's time to start it up, see if we got rid of that noise and see if we've got some charging happening. Yeah, that sounds a bit better. No battery light, which is good. Let's have a look at some voltages. And we're looking at 14.4 with no load. Let's chuck on some headlights. High beam, 14.4. Very nice, very nice. Time to button it up, go for a road test, hey? It's blowing a gale outside there, guys. Road test complete, all good. No sound anymore, no longer screaming like a banshee, and it's charging correctly. This test method can be used for any alternator that has a sense wire and a light wire. I'm not talking smart charge, that's different again, but the basic alternator, this is the test method. So I hope you got something from the video today, guys, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, feel free to comment down below. Don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. While you're waiting for the next video to come out, what you could do is cruise around the channel, have a look at something else that might interest you. In the meantime, you can catch up with us on Facebook as well as Instagram to see what's happening in the workshop as well as the electronics lab. But until we catch up with one another on the next video, guys, this is Miracle Max signing off. I'll catch you later.